Okay, one Juno 106 module board liberated from the synth, only held in by uh, six screws, which is uh, all good. And uh, happy to report that there's no nasty surprises underneath, no wreck tracks, no um, no obvious damage at all. I suppose something could be hidden under the uh, the solder, but uh, there were some signs that. Um, one of the repairers had problems clearing the holes because if you look on the original voice modules the legs are quite a way through the board you can actually see on here that the original ones are sitting a lot lower on the board than uh, the replacements which are standing as if the legs have been lowered into pits of solder so possibly when they were replacing that they were using desoldered braid and couldn't get the holes to clear um, not surprising I absolutely detest desolder braid. Um, I did. Uh, I spent a few years doing arcade board repair for, for shits and giggles, really, and quickly gave up on desolder braid. Uh, what I use now is a. Uh, it's not a particularly expensive desolder station. As desolder stations go, you can spend thousands. This is a couple of hundred bucks. Um, it's a hollow point soldering iron with a vacuum pump, which you fire with a button, and uh, a little container inside where the uh, I won't open that because I don't want to shower the board with uh, desold so, um, desoldered fragments but that is the way to get the stuff off the board um, it clears the holes in a single a single pass and uh, yeah you don't have to heat the board repeatedly you don't uh, you're not sc uh, scraping around with uh, desoldered braid trying to wick up some solder so um, also desoldered braid has a nasty habit of uh, setting on whatever you're working on. Uh, you've got a, a huge reel of this stuff in your hand which is acting as a massive heat sink so it goes from molten to solid in an absolute flash as soon as you remove the, the soldering heat. Um, it has a habit of biting onto tracks and biting onto pins and if you're moving it when you're doing that then it tends to rip things off. So, um, Lucky there's no damage underneath. The board is in pretty good nick and a little bit dusty. What is interesting though, I'm recording this using an iPhone on a tripod, so I'll try and show you what I'm talking about. If you can see the model number on the, the voice chips, and there are six, there's one there. That, these are filter chips. Um, this one actually has been replaced as well. Um, interesting. Okay. Um, going by the model number on, or the batch number actually, I should say, on these uh, 80017 voice chips, which are the VCF and VCA modules. Um, 55B, 54B, 40A, 54B, 54B, and right at the back, another 54B. So clearly, the original board came with uh, six 54Bs, which one, two, three, four, that's the original. And we've got uh, a replacement 40A and a replacement 55B. So obviously it's had problems before, um, apparently finding a Juno that hasn't had one module replaced uh, is virtually uh, impossible these days unless it's been faulty since probably the mid 80s because these things had a bit of a reputation back in the day of keeling over. So what I'll do, I will desolder these voice chips, I'll probably desolder that uh, filter module because it's another one of these ones where it's it's standing very proud on the board as if they couldn't clear the holes so they couldn't fit it properly. Um, the problem seems to be that these chips, is the, the coating causes the problem, whether it's trapping moisture or whether it's causing uh, parasitic capacitance or somehow conductive as it ages, I don't know. What I've never heard any explanation of is why it affects these voice chips but not these um, filter modules which seem to be coated with the same thing. Either there is a component in here which doesn't like whatever this coating's doing, and there are some uh, sand resistors, printed resistors. So, okay, so that might be it. Um, actually, looking across here, it's had two voice modules replaced because that's a K53, which is not original. That's a K54, which is original. And. Ah, oh, that's a K54 as well. Yep, so it's only had one of these replaced. So it's had two um, 80017s replaced and a single 5534. Now, either those chips had gone bad on the original board or the repairer was just really shooting in the dark, which is entirely possible. So 
Next step is to desolder these, and I'll try and show you the desoldering iron in action with this little tripod if it will behave. And um, these will go into an acetone bath for two or three days, I believe. Strip that coating off, and then they apparently are good to go. So I'll get on with that.